Do you know of how to get an old school telegraph going from each from each shack on the same property at 1500 feet apart? So they got power, they got power poles set up. And also oh. don't want to use radios. Yeah. So I'm thinking um, you know, old school, you know, you're thinking telegraph. So um hey. You know, they work they work differently. So they, they there's a battery mm -hmm. and a coil. Um, and it wasn't a beep, there wasn't a tone, there was more of a buzz. But I don't well, remember how it was set up. They were they um let me see if I can pull this up here. Um Okay, I was able to do a quickie search. Uh, what you're going to be looking for is a telegraph sounder. And it's, it's, I got one here somewhere. I bought it off of eBay like 20 some years ago. Um, but these telegraph systems, they run DC power. It's not very, not very high voltage, 12 volts, 24 volts, something like that. Uh, but the sound, but if you, if you press the key on one end, you know, that completes the circuit, and then the sounder is supposed to make the clacks on the other end. And that's what you would find in a in a, uh, a railroad, a train station, is okay. the telegraph operator would listen to the sounder. And uh, um, the thing you got to remember is if we're doing CW over the air, you know, we hear the dots and the dashes as the tones, but it's the, with the sounder, it's the opposite. You listen to, you know, when it starts clacking, you got to listen to the gaps between the clacks. So, uh, but uh, that's how it's that. I guess that's that's the kind of the way, you know, in which I would I would I would look. Is yeah, let's see if I can, you know. Boy, these things used to be dirt cheap, and now I see they're like they're like, you know, hundreds of bucks. So. <laughs> <laughs> but that's that's going to be the secret sauce you're going to need and then you're going to need like a 12 volts power supply um i know there's plans online to kind of make a transformer you know so it's uh um to run everything but i, I would think that 1500 feet uh you wouldn't need like a relay or anything like that the voltage drop shouldn't be so bad that the that the sounder should work so that's interesting you know, Michael, you're on the city council. Uh -huh. Maybe you could spring to get some utility poles between your QTH and my QTH, and you know, maybe <laughs> we can work on something. You, you've been wanting to work on. You've been really wanting to work on the um, on, um, CW. I mean, mm -hmm. This is a perfect opportunity, right? Oh yeah, I'll have to. <laughs> I'll have to dig my sounder out of my out of out of the. The back room and see if I can get that thing working. Um, I've seen plans online on how you can, you know, create the transformer so that you get the voltage right and and make the thing work. So right, right. I, I think it, I think it'd be best if we stick around forty meters, probably around like seventy one fourteen. It'd probably be easier for you and me. But um, <laughs> you know, but yeah, if you can get two sounders and a couple keys and the power supply, yeah, by all means, go for it. I think that'd be pretty interesting. Let us know how it goes. Mm hmm. Yep. Yep. The only other thing I could think of is is to do something with, um, you know, sort of like with the telephone, you know, plain old, you know, the old landline phone kind of thing. Right. Um, but right. that might take a little bit of there's there's emulators you can get so you can run your own like private switch network. So. Oh, but man. that's that's really that's going really crazy. In Seattle, there is a, I think it's called the Connections Museum. Yes, it is. YouTube, if you check it out mm -hmm. on YouTube. And they have old switches from like the 30s and 40s, 20s, even earlier, uh, you know, from the beginning of, phone, of phones. And there are some really interesting um, videos on how all that worked, the mechanical portion of it. I mean, you got to remember, this is like a lot of the stuff is pre-computers. Um but a lot of it, like it's all relays and mechanical and crazy stuff. I mean, you can go into that for hours and hours. Oh, they they got a they got a, a really neat uh, YouTube channel, and um, because they've got electronic, they've got mechanical switching systems, like an entire um, an entire uh, 
telco switch, a crossbar. Um, yes. It's just set up. It, it's an old it's an old central office in Seattle that they turned into a museum. So they got working switch equipment, and you can place phone calls on it and watch the switches go crazy. And then I think they got a digital switching system too from the 1970s. Mm -hmm. um, but the, yeah, but the mechanical one is just like it's 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 crazy technology. Um, so yeah, you might want to check that out if you're ever in the Seattle area. Or if you're not, just check out their YouTube channel. Yeah, the YouTube so, the YouTube yeah. channel itself is a rabbit hole. You're gonna get stuck in for a couple of hours. <laughs> I know. I've um, I've, I I've, <laughs> I've I've done that. I've done that. It's it's a great it's a great channel. It's um I I love that kind of I love that kind of content. So yeah, we oh, might yeah. have to we might have to might have to um do some digging around and see if we can kind of come up with uh, either. Mm -hmm. Either get, make that sounder work, or or see if we can make a an old fashioned telephone line work, or something like that. So <laughs> I know a guy like, like a mile of old telephone cables, so we can do something. KB9 VBR antennas are simple, effective, and affordable VHF and UHF antennas for amateur radio, MERS, public safety, and GMRS. Made in the USA with quality parts. Get yours online at jpole-antenna.com.